back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power Breaker, my novel podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. I got a rant for you today. I'm going to be doing this a lot this year. I promise you on this one. The NBA season has now started. I am a Miami Heat fan, so I'm going to be digging deep down into Miami Heat basketball. I also do some work for Sports Illustrated on Inside the Heat SI. So if you haven't seen some of my stuff there, they're not, not long stories, but short blurbs and so forth. Talking about different things Miami Heat related. But here we are, Rudy's Rant, Power Come On on the podcast. We talk facts over feelings. Let's jump on in. But before we start, thank you for your continued support of our channel. We thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Become a member. You can also go over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there as well. The Miami Heat last night embarrassed itself. Season opener, home court. Celebrating Pat Riley, his the, the court naming for Pat Riley, a very, very nice gesture by Mickey Harrison and, the, and you know, the, the owner of the Miami Heat. Pat Riley's been with the Heat for 30 years. Uh, he is the person who changed the franchise. And they did a halftime ceremony for him. At halftime, the Heat was down 58-54 to the Orlando Magic and proceeded to get absolutely annihilated in the third quarter. Quite frankly, the first half, Miami Heat's defense was terrible. 58 points in the first half. I know the league is different today than it was a decade ago or 20 years ago or whatever, but Miami still hangs its hat on playing defense. And the defense yesterday was horrible. But the third quarter was especially alarming because, in typical Heat fashion, they allow a game to get away from them in the blink of an eye, and they don't adjust. 58-54. First, first shot for the Miami Heat, a three. Second shot, a three. Third shot, a three. Fourth shot, a three. Fifth shot, a three. First five shots of the third quarter by the Miami Heat with three-point shots. They all missed. And the Orlando Magic led 66-54 at that point. They finally shot a two. They missed. Then they turned it over. And then finally with 8.52 to go in the third quarter, Terry Rozier hits a three. So you're now down 70 to 57. Watching the Miami Heat shoot and miss threes and not attack the rim, <clears throat> it's ridiculous. The Miami Heat took shit. They took like they took double digit threes in the third quarter. Heck, they took double-digit threes before the six-minute mark of the third quarter. I, I mean, it, it, it's it's ridiculous, and it's concerning. And it's concerning because, as a Miami Heat fan, I have become immune, I mean, numb to the style of play. The Miami Heat has the ability to be a dominating team. And people don't want to believe it, but the Heat went to the finals twice over five years and been to the Eastern Conference Finals four times in five years. So the Miami Heat has the ability to go places and win at a high level. So, I'm sorry, they've been to the Eastern Conference Finals three times in five years. It, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know they have it in them, but... If they don't play with full max effort, they will get blown out. They don't have the scoring weapons necessary to withstand, I mean, going one for ten on threes in a six-minute span. This game went from a four-point game to a 25-point game in the third quarter. And, in fact, it was worse than that. The lead ballooned at one point to 28 in the third quarter while they kept jacking threes. Jimmy Butler, invisible. Bam Adebayo, terrible. Tyler Hero, mediocre. 
Terry Rozier, blah. Overall, everybody sucks. Everybody sucks. And it's concerning also because, and you don't, you don't want to overreact, but if you watch the Miami Heat over the last few years, you know what the Miami Heat is. You know what you've seen. You know it. You already know. You already feel it. I mean, last year, 46 and 36 easily should have been 54 and 28. Instead of, a, instead of an eight seed, or a, I'm sorry, a playing team that ended up as an eight seed, they could have been a two seed. But they were an eight seed. Because they fuck around and blow games that they have leads in, big leads in the fourth quarter, and piss them away with shit like you saw in the third quarter yesterday. Year before, 44 and 38. And they end up in the finals and lose to the Nuggets. Like, this is the type of team you have. You have a team that you know has the ability. And that's what makes it so ungodly frustrating when they dick around in regular season basketball. Year before that, 53 and 29, they won the East. They were the, they were, they were the number one seed in the East. So you know they have it in them. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals. Year before that, 40 and 32. But what you see constantly from this team is they lose to teams they're better than. Now, I don't know if they're better than Orlando this year. Orlando is good. Paulo Boncaro is a monster. He's an absolute stud. But at the same time, this was still a 58-54 game. Miami was leading for a good portion of the first, first half. If you actually look at it, they were leading for a good portion of this. It was a tie game at the end of the first quarter. <clears throat> they were up by as many as 10 in the first, I mean, what was it, an eight-point game in the first quarter? Then they let a lead, then they, then they blow the lead, as they always do. They do stupid shit, and they let people get back in the game. They led by four, they led by four, they led by three, they led by four, led by two. And, of course, they're up, they're up two, and then they allow the Magic to score Four, eight, eight, six straight going into half. I mean, they trail. The Miami Heat have glaring holes, and we know what those holes are. They're small. They're too small. And they got their ass kicked on the offensive glass, which is why effort from this team is critical. Bam Adebayo is being lauded as this guy who can make, who who is that? Who, he, he's lauded as that dude. He's not that dude. Not right now. He's not been that dude his entire career. There's so much expected from Bam Adebayo, and he can't produce it, or he won't produce it. The guy, I mean, realistically, he's a very good basketball player. Is he a great basketball player or an elite basketball player? No. Guys like Kevin Garnett think that Bam has another level in him. Well, when are we going to see it? I don't think that level exists. I'd love to be wrong, but I don't see it in him. He's afraid to shoot mid-range jump shots. He still has no real post game. A lot of his stuff is on junk and, and, and putbacks and, and and yeah, he hits mid-range jumpers here and there, but he's not some he's not some highly efficient mid-range shooter. And now he wants to shoot threes. He took five shots yesterday. Two of them were threes, and he missed them both, obviously. He had five rebounds. This is a guy who sits here and says, I'm the defensive player of the year, and he had five rebounds. And we gave him 116 points. And he was completely ineffective. If Bam Adebayo wants to be that guy, Bam Adebayo has to average 25 and 12 and shoot 55% from the field. And he has to have a post game. And he has to get to the free throw line. And he has to dominate. And he has to take more than 14 shots a game. I don't want to see Tyler Hero jacking the ball 20 times a game. I don't. I don't. He's inefficient. Jimmy Butler yesterday was terrible. Horrible. Three points. And, and he had three points. And the game was a four-point game at the break. 
Nothing short of a miracle that it was that close at the break with Jimmy Butler having four, three points at halftime. I know what, how Miami acts with these young rookies. Why did you draft this kid, Kalel Ware, if he's not going to play? He looked fantastic in summer league, and you're not going to play him? We don't have size. Thomas Bryant, with all respect, does nothing. Does nothing. Niko Jovic, I like him. He's not a starter. He's a bench player. He needs to come off the bench. You need to start a big lineup. Jovic is freaking 6'10", 6'11", and plays like he's 6'6". Kalel Ware needs to start next to Bam Adebayo. I don't give a shit. I don't care if he's green as fuck. He's 6'11", 7' tall. He's a pogo stick. And he's athletic as shit. And playing next to Bam will allow... It just gives so many options. And I may be totally out of bounds. I watched him in the summer. He looked great. You you drafted him. Play him. It's not complicated. You play him. We don't have size. We get murdered on the glass by everyone. This isn't new. The Miami Heat getting smashed on the glass is not a new thing. And it's already started in game, game one. Miami had beaten Orlando nine straight times in Miami. Well, that's over with. Orlando won the division last year. Miami has the ability to win, but they have to they have to play with effort to do it. They are not some immensely offensively skilled team. And I'll tell you what, I'm tired of watching small ball. Fuck small ball. Play big. Jimmy Butler can't be your power forward. Terry Rozier comes over last year in a trade with Kyle for Kyle Lowry. I would take Kyle Lowry right now. Terry Rozier, God bless you. Attack the damn rim. Stop jacking bad threes. Stop jacking bad threes. I'm, I'm waiting to see you hit more than two or three in a game for us. Two for seven. Took 15 shots. I, I, he didn't really play point guard. He took the most shots on the team. Oh, I'm sorry, and Jovic took 15 shots too, and he had 15. But what did Jovic do? He was one of seven from three. So he was six of eight from two and one of seven from three. How about you stop shooting threes, Jovic? It ain't complicated. If you can't make a jump shot, go to the basket. <clears throat> Personally, I would start Duncan Robinson. I would not start Jovic. Heck, if you want to go a, a step deeper, I would start Duncan Robinson and Kalel Ware. And I would tell you who I would be bringing off the bench. I'd be bringing Tyler Hero off the bench. I said it last year. Tyler Hero's not a starter. Tyler Hero is not a starter. Tyler Hero only took 10 shots yesterday, by the way. But Tyler Hero is not a starter. He is a bench producer. He is the guy that can come off the bench and give you 17 to 20 points or 20 to 25 because he's going to get his shots. Putting him in the, in the lineup with Jimmy Butler and Bam and Rozier, it doesn't work. It didn't work last year. There's always been an issue with Tyler Hero when he's on the floor with Jimmy Butler, if you've noticed. Jimmy Butler becomes way too passive and Tyler Hero shoots way too damn much. Because Jimmy wants to get everybody involved. I get it. It's the first game of the year. So we're going to do the overreaction. But this is not an overreaction. It's a reaction to what we've watched for three years. It's what we've been watching for three straight years. This isn't new. I mean, where did play? He played six minutes. We were down 30. Seven-foot dude. Play this dude. Play him. Pat Riley didn't play rookies until he played Dwayne Wade. It's time we start using our rookies and stop wasting them wasting them on the bench. Because I don't know why you drafted him if you're not going to play him. It makes no sense. You're a small team. He's a seven-footer. There's no way in the world Thomas Bryant should play 16 minutes and Kalel Ware play six. 
No way in the world. It's absolutely ridiculous. They shot 39%, 324 from three. The Magic shot 42.7%. They weren't great. We just sucked. And the Magic grabbed 18 offensive boards and crushed us on the glass, 57-41. That is effort. That's all that is. That's not a skill issue. That's an effort issue. I mean, first half, they let Gary Harris go off. Like, you want to guard their best three-point shooter? It might be an idea. Very frustrating to watch that game last night. And, and it's an embarrassment to Pat Riley because Pat Riley's being honored that night. And again, this is Miami in a celebration looking like complete ass crack in the second half of a game. It's like they go into a coma with these long half times. I don't understand it. It's happened. It happened with Chris Bosh. I went to that game. It happened to be against the Orlando Magic. And we lost because we got blown out in the third quarter, just like last night. I can't remember if it happened with Dwayne Wade. We've had so many celebrations for Dwayne Wade, so I've lost track. But it seems like whenever we have a celebration of something in a long halftime, the Miami Heat go into a coma. Look, it's a long season. There's 81 more games left. But getting your ass drop kicked by damn near when you're down by 30 or damn near, to what, 28 for a good chunk of the second half, it's not a good look. You got to go travel and play at Charlotte on Saturday? Hey, better get it together. But we need to see Bam Adebayo be a guy that, according to Kevin Garnett, has another level in him. We just have never seen it. I think Miami can be really, really good. I always think that. I'm a homer. I mean, I I, I don't always think that. I, I'm lying. I don't always think that. I, I have thought in the past that Miami stunk, and, and I don't believe in shit. But I believe they have the ability to be really good. Do I think that Miami would have beaten Boston in the first round last year if they were healthy? Maybe. Maybe. But we weren't healthy, so we have no idea. I do think we're the toughest matchup for the Boston Celtics. I think we are the biggest headache for the Boston Celtics. <clears throat> and I do think we're the only team that can beat the if we don't beat the Boston Celtics, the Boston Celtics are going to win the championship again. They're going to. They're loaded and they shoot the lights out. But even the Celtics have their their situations in which they keep shooting and the lid covers. The lid covers the rim. They had tied the record in their opener and then missed what 13 straight threes after that and didn't and they didn't break the record. Look, man, obviously the first game was disappointment. Got to get it together for game two, but you can't play like this against anyone and expect to win. You can't go into a half. You can't open a half and just shoot a bunch of bricks from three. I mean, this is ridiculous. That is. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. They missed five straight. Then they hit one. Six. Hit another. It's two of seven, two of eight. Another miss, two of nine. Another miss, two of ten. 11. Oh, well, Thomas Bryant hit a three. My God. I mean, they were two of 11 and they're, I mean, to start off the third. I mean, they hit a few later on. They're down 28 at that point. You can't, you can't play that way. Ag be aggressive. Attack the rim. I mean, it's crazy. Miami still shot 29 free throws. Don't know how. They weren't aggressive at all. And it's funny because the Magic shot 49 threes. Miami shot 34. Miami got the line 29 times. But when you do it to start a half and you get blown out of the room because you keep doing it, it's just stupid. 
that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts, Miami Heat fans. You know, this is going to become a normal thing for me hitting up on the Miami Heat because I'm going to do a lot of Miami Heat content in, during the NBA season. So let me know your thoughts. Facts over feelings here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Pound that like button. Hit that bell. Also, run, <clears throat> go on over to Rudy's Rant. Subscribe over there. Thank you so much. Come on now.